In this video, we'll talk about how to convert between logarithmic and exponential equations, and how we use that principle to solve certain kinds of equations. The key idea here is what we call the definition of the logarithm. This relationship tells us how to convert between a logarithmic expression and an exponential expression. You can follow the different pieces here by seeing that the y goes from being by itself on one side of the logarithmic equation to being the exponent. The a goes from being the base of the logarithm to the base of the exponential expression. And then the x goes from being inside the logarithm to being by itself on the other side of the exponential equation. So let's see this in action. We're given a logarithmic equation. We're told to convert it to exponential form and then solve for t. So again, notice the three pieces. We've got the 2, which is by itself on the left-hand side of the logarithmic equation. So the 2 corresponds to the y. The 5 is the base of the logarithm, so that's my a. And then the x is the t that's inside the logarithm. So when I rewrite this equation, what I get is a to the y equals x. So 5 to the 2 equals t. That's 5 squared, that's 25. And so we actually don't have anything else to do to solve for t. We can see that t equals 25. OK, now let's look at this example. Now we have an exponential equation, but it doesn't quite look like what it needs to look like for our definition of our logarithm. Notice that in the definition of the logarithm, it says a to the y equals x. So what's different about our equation? Well, what's different is that we have this point 2 in front of my exponential expression. If you remember your order of operations, exponentiation happens before multiplication, which means only the e is being raised to the x power. The point 2 is not part of that exponential expression. So to get rid of that point 2, I'm going to divide both sides of this equation by point 2. I have to do that before I try to convert this to logarithmic form. When I do that, the point 2 is on the left divide out. I get e to the x. 13 divided by 0.2, I can work that out. That turns out to be 65. And so, so now we have an exponential equation. My e is my a, the base of my exponential. The x is actually the y here. That's the power. And then the 65, that's the x. So when I rewrite this in logarithmic form, I get y equals log base a of x, which in this case is going to be x equals the log base e of 65. Now log base e is special because that's actually what we call the natural log. So that's ln of 65. And since I have an ln button on my calculator, if I wanted to know an approximate answer here, I could type that on my calculator and I get that this is approximately 4.17. So depending on what kind of answer you're looking for, if you're looking for an exact answer, the exact answer is natural log of 65. An approximate answer would be 4.17. All right, let's do one more. So once again, we have a logarithmic equation. And once again, we have this 4 sitting out in front of the logarithm that's kind of in the way. If I look at my definition of my logarithm, there can't be anything in front of the logarithm. It just has to be a log all by itself. So I've got to fix this equation before I can convert it. I've got to divide both sides by 4. So when I do that, I get the log base 3 of x squared minus 7 equals 8 divided by 4, which is 2. So the 3 is the a, the x squared minus 7, that's my x, and the 2 is the y. So when I rewrite this, I get 3 to the 2 equals x squared minus 7. 3 to the 2, that's 3 squared, that's 9. 9 equals x squared minus 7. Add 7 to both sides, I get 16. So x squared equals 16. I can take the square root of both sides. When I do that, I get plus or minus the square root of 16. Because remember, when you square a negative number, the negative goes away. So whenever we take the square root of both sides, we get a plus or minus. So that means we get two solutions, x equals plus or minus 